In this session, we will cover the basics of EDI. We will get to its definition, the X12 format, its transaction sets, its data segments, elements, and loops, then finally, the implementation guideline. So what is EDI, or Electronic Data Interchange? It is the exchange of electronic files in a standard format that is easily processable by a computer so that the exchange can be automated without any human intervention. There are many advantages to using EDI. Mainly, it is used to manage huge volumes of transactions at minimal operating cost, as well as eliminate mailing delays and data entry errors. There are two well-defined processes in EDI, the outbound process and the inbound process. The outbound process is when an EDI file gets generated from data out of an existing system and then sent to a trading partner. The inbound process is when an EDI file is received from a trading partner and its data gets parsed and mapped into an existing system. Here is one example of how one can use in his application the Freddycom and the ADOCOM to interconnect the EDI file to a database. The ADOCOM would be used to access a database. In the application, the values of the database fields returned by the ADOCOM are mapped to the properties of the Freddycom. The Freddycom would be used to construct or parse an EDI file. Let us now take a closer look at the EDI format. In here, we have a sample EDI X12 file. As you can see, it is quite cryptic. But remember, it was designed for a computer to process and not for us to read. The EDI format is made up of data segments separated by segment terminators. The data segments, in turn, are made up of data elements. separated by element terminators. EDI was designed as much to be as an electronic replicate or mirror of a paper document transaction. For example, the paper documents or forms are called transaction sets in EDI, and how the documents are arranged and grouped by their departments is equivalent to how the functional group segments separate the transaction sets by their functions. The paper envelope that encloses the documents is equivalent to the interchange segment that encloses the group of transaction sets. And the person sending the mail and the one receiving it would be equivalent to a computer sending an EDI file and a computer receiving it. Remember that EDI is the exchange of electronic files between computers. Here is a comparison of a paper envelope to the interchange or ISA segment. While an envelope has a to and from post office mailing addresses on it, the interchange segment has the sender's and receiver's electronic IDs in it. Similar to how you would arrange the paper documents by grouping them by their departments that would process them. For example, purchase orders are grouped together so that they get sent to the accounts payable department while the invoices go to the accounts receivable department. So too does the EDI interchange have the functional group so as to group the transaction sets by their functions. The GS or functional group header segment denotes the start of a group of transaction sets. The GE or functional group trailing segment denotes the end of the group. Note that the GE segment has the count number of transaction sets that were enclosed in the group example, three purchase orders, one invoice. It also has a control number of the GS segment. So the order of the EDI X12 segments goes as follows. The interchange segments encloses the functional group segments that in turn encloses the transaction set segments. So let us take a closer look at transaction sets. A transaction set is basically the document itself. It is made up of data segments. And these data segments are sectioned into areas or tables. The heading is area 1 or table 1. The detail is area 2 or table 2. The summary is area 3 or table 3. 
Not all transaction sets have all three areas, and in fact, many do not have the summary section. Transaction sets are made up of data segments, and in turn, the data segments are made up of data elements. In this example, we have four data elements that are separated by element terminators. Element terminators can be of any character, but the asterisk is commonly used. At the end of a data segment is the segment terminator. Segment terminators can be of any character or string. In this example, we use the tilde. Some data elements are qualifiers. They hold codes that would describe the values of data elements after them. In this example, we have BT that tells us that the following element is a build to company. The 9 tells us that the company ID is using the DUNS identification code. If we were to view a segment as a sentence, then the N1 segment would say, the build to company name is ABC Inc. with a DUNS ID of 1234567. Some view data segments to be like records, and their data elements to be like fields. Data segments can be viewed better by using the EDI Dev eFile Manager. In here, we have a section that displays the same N1 segment. Note how the descriptions of the codes are displayed next to them. Sometimes data segments have to be read together to obtain the correct information. That is when we use EDI loops to denote such relations. EDI loops are used to keep related segments together so that together they can convey the correct information. Loops also make possible to repeat a group of related segments. In our example, we have the N1, N2, N3, and N4 segments in a loop. Note how the segments depend on each other. For example, the N3 segment with the street address value does not make sense without the N1 segment telling us that it is the street address of the Build 2 company. This example also shows how the loop is used twice to hold two different information of similar format. The first loop holds the Build 2 address, while the second loop holds the Ship 2 address. The EDI X12, even though it is the standard, still has many versions and transaction sets that users have to be aware of so as to exchange EDI files successfully. The version number is indicated by its first three digits. The last digit indicates a release. For example, the 4010 and the 4020 would indicate a major release, and the 4012 would indicate an interim release. Changes in their interim releases are included in the next version. Therefore, version 4020 would include the changes that are in the 4012 release. The version of a transaction set in an EDI X12 file can be found in the eighth data element of the functional group or GS segment. Even when using the same versions of transaction sets, there are still differences in how companies would use them. For example, some data segments and elements may be omitted, or the number of times a loop can be used is limited, or some code values of an element restricted. All these rules would be noted in an EDI implementation guideline. Here's an example of an 850 transaction set guideline for a particular company. Note that only the segments that are being used in the transaction set are displayed. And in the required column, a data segment that must be used is indicated with an M for mandatory. An O indicates that the segment is optional. The maximum column indicates the maximum number of times a segment can be used. Example, the ref segment can be used at most two times. The repeat column denotes the maximum times a loop can be repeated. Example, the N1 loop can be repeated at most four times. The implementation guideline also has a detailed section for each segment, which shows the requirements for each of its elements. In this example, we have the ST segment that has two data elements. The first element is allowed to have only the value 850. It is a required element with a length of exactly three characters. 
The second element should hold a control number for the transaction set. It too is required with a minimum length of 4 and a maximum length of 9 characters. Let us take another example. The BEG segment that uses only 4 of its 12 data elements. The 4 elements used have the position numbers 1, 2, 3, and 5. The first data element indicates that it can only have the value 00. zero. It is a mandatory element with an exact length of 2 characters. The second data element can only have KE, KN, or SA as its value. It too is mandatory with an exact length of 2 characters. The third data element should contain the purchase order number. It is also mandatory with a minimum length of 1 and a maximum of 22 characters. Note that the fourth data element is not being used and that the next data element is the fifth data element. It is a mandatory element and should contain the purchase order date value of 8 characters.